In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a KPI design like this in Power BI, where I'm showing the total sales and the sales trend over these date ranges. So currently it's showing for 2025. If I show 2024, it will show for the 2024 data. And there are other filters like 30 days, 7 days, 3 months. So we can create a KPI design like this. And if you want to incorporate this KPI design in your dashboard, you can incorporate this for the main KPI in your dashboard. That way you can enhance your dashboard a lot. So let me show you how to create this in Power BI step by step. Here I have sales date, date table and the sales measure, which is nothing but the sum of sales. And if I go to the model view, here you can see the relationship between date and sales table on date column. So let's first go to the insert and insert a shape from here, the rectangle shape. And let's give it a design like this and go to the shape and style. And here let's choose the rounded corner as 20 pixels fill we can make it the 60 percent lighter blue and here we can make it more transparent make it 80 percent transparent we can turn up the border we can go to the shadow and enable it so our background design is ready next what we can do is let's take a card visual and in this card visual let's add the sales measure and let's go to the size and style and turn off the background now let's go to the call out value and from here let's make this 22 and change the font to saji y semi bold also we can change the display unit to so that we can see the whole value and for the labels we can say total sales or just sales both are fine so position should be below so choose bottom and then this gap we can reduce a little bit so make it six maybe or five yeah this one is also fine four and here let's choose uh semi bold yeah this is fine uh now next we'll have to uh, remove the background and uh, border so for that let's go to the cards and from here let's turn off the border and turn off the divider and background as well so this is done we can reduce the size like this and place it here this looks fine Next, we want a trend. So let's take a line chart. And in this line chart, let's add this sales measure and let's add the date column from the date table. So this is how it looks. Next, what we can do is double click and let's go to size and style and turn off the background, turn off the title. So basically, I'm going to turn off everything this value, this title, and this value from the y axis. So this is fine. Let's change the color of it. So if I click anywhere here, so it will go this color and from here let's choose something like this i guess this is fine we can choose little dark yeah this is fine okay let's align this so we are going to align it something from here and it will go till here keep some gaps from the left and right next we'll have to filter this date range so currently it's showing the sales for all the date ranges that is the lifetime sales value so we'll have to incorporate a slicer which will filter for different date ranges like this for seven days for 30 days for three months six months 2025 2024 and these should be dynamics like 2025 and 2024 is not static it is going to change so instead of current year it will show 2025 and for previous year it will show four and this is all for the lifetime value so for that what we can do is we'll have to create a table so for that let's select any table and click on new table and let's name it as date category let's create a variable called max date and this will be maximum of the date from the date table let's return and here i'm gonna say add columns so this will create a table so it wants a table inside this add table so for i'm going to give a date range for the seven day date range so for that we'll use dates in period and it requires date so let's give date from the date column from the date table and start date will be the maximum date from the date table so we can use that variable as well so let's choose this max date and the interval will be minus seven and the interval will be days so this will create a table which will have seven days date values and next we are going to say let's create another column called category inside this table and category will be having a value called 7d which represents seven days and to sort this category we are going to create another column called and this will have let's say one let's close the bracket so this i have created a table which will have the seven days date range similarly i am going to create a union of it and create it for different ranges like 
union i'm going to create a union and then let's copy this again so let's copy this and let's create it again for few more times so for this i've created for seven days if i want 30 days so we can say 30 here and here we'll say 30 and sort we can change it to two for three months we can say minus three and here we can change it to month and here we'll say instead of 70 we can say 3m and this sort will be three similarly here we can say minus six and here instead of day let's say month and here it will be six m so it will be four so this we have to till uh, six months next we want to create for 2025 and 2024 so which will, which will be current year and previous so for that what we can do is let's create this thing here we will use dates between and let's take this date column and for start date we'll start from the start day of this year so for that we'll say year from this and let's say date let's use this date function so here it needs year month and day so year has given here and for month and can give 0101 which represents the start date of the current year and uh, it requires end date so for end date we can say max date and for category we can show current year as well but if you want to show 2025 for that let's create a variable here and say cy so this will have format year or let's say format format this max date to yyyy so it will take the max date which is the uh, maximum date so for from there we can uh, parse the and take out the year value and this will be in the text format okay similarly we can create for uh, previous year as well so previous year it will be slightly different so here uh, we are going to say year of this max date which will be 2025 and then we'll say minus one and then we are going to format it to no and then we are going to convert it to text let's give it as text so this will create a previous year value in text format so now i'm going to use this and by here so instead of cy let's use the cy variable without this quotes so it's taking this variable now similarly we are going to create another one for py so for py we are going to say year of this minus one so it, it will be the start date of the previous year and the max date we are going to take it from here only and here this year will be same for here month we can say 12 and date value we can say 31 and in this category we can say py the variable py and the sort let's change this sort to 5 and this one to 6 next we have we'll have to create a last value for the lifetime value so for this lifetime we can simply use this calendar function where we want to give start in and end date for start in we can give the minimum date minimum date from the date table for the maximum date we can give the max date and this value we can call it as all and this will be seven and here let's add so this is it we have created a date category table next let's go to the data model view and from here let's bring this date category table here to join with the date table so let's join this date column from this date category and make the cross filter direction to both so why i have created this both is if i show you here let's make it single so if i say this you will see this is the many side and this is the one side because it has the duplicates of the dates and this doesn't have duplicates so it has created one to many and the filter direction is the date table can filter date category but date category cannot filter date table for that reason we have made it both direction filter for this cross filter direction and save this so now this category can filter the date table and this date table can filter the sales data so let's go here and let's take a button slicer and for this button slicer let's add the category from the date category and let's sort this category with the sort column so go here and sort by column to sort so it's sorted next what we can do is go to this uh, format and uh, here we are going to remove the background remove the background and then let's go to the title and turn on this title next to go to the slicer settings and we can make it for selection as on so that something is selected at all time selection is done let's go to multi button layout and here the row should be one and columns we can give seven so that we have all the seven values next let's go to the call out values and here select all and for the all we'll have to make this font value to size you and this to is fine let's uh, align this to center so everything is aligned next let's go to this button for this buttons for the from the all what we can do is this change this rectangle to rounded rectangle and uh, 
make the corner radius to 10 maybe and padding to custom so that we can reduce the size and still it will be visible let's reduce it more so this is fine and uh, for the uh, so we can turn off the background and border as well for everything now let's go to the default state so you will see everything is applied already which is fine so let's just go to the selected state and for the selected state we want the background to be enabled and that should be a white background the rest everything is fine so see only the background is changing but for the background we are not able to view the values so for that let's go to the callout value again and in the callout value let's uh, in the callout value let's select the selected states and for the selected state let's make it say you semi bold and color let's make it black so now we can see 70 and we can change the values from here like this so let's place this here and uh, align it like this so now if you see currently it's showing the sales value for six months if i choose 2025 it will show the 2025 date ranges you can see the sales for each day and we can see the total value for the month so here let's increase the size or let's do one thing let's go to the multi card layout and uh, inside this we can see this gap option so uniform gap we can make it as zero so now uh, the gap has reduced and we can see the back so if i select 2024 it will show the 2024 values and data we can see the 2024 to sales and the sales trend if i click 30 days it will show the 30 days sales value and if i click all it will show all the sales values like the lifetime sales values and the lifetime sales trend so this after you have done everything we can select everything like this and type Control g to group everything so that we can move everything at once and uh, we can keep it anywhere in the dashboard so this kpi design you can try it out in your dashboard and you can try this kpi design specifically for the main kpi of your dashboard if you need my help and want to connect one-on-one -on -one with me you can book a call on topmate and if you want to buy power bi reports along with data set and brd document you can check out the products i have here i have provided the links in the description see you there these are the books that I highly recommend buying that can take your Power BI skills to the next level. These three books can cover almost all the aspects of Power BI from DAX to Power Query to the overall Power BI dashboarding. You can find the link of these books in the description. Check them out if you want to level up faster. So I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you like this video. If you like this video, do not forget to subscribe my channel. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching. See you in the next video.